Hey y'all, today on Cooking Chris's Dishes, we're gonna be cooking up our ever popular Mississippi beef roast, but we're gonna be doing it in our Instant Pot. That way we can do it in less than half the time. So we're making your life a little easier all while having a whole lot of fun. Hey y'all, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy. And today we are cooking up a battle winner that y'all have chosen. It was between the Mississippi chicken, Mississippi chicken, oh Mississippi chicken, and Mississippi beef, or in this case, a beef roast that looks like it's shaped like Indiana, because that's where we're from, so <laughs> there you go. But it's the same recipe as you would do in a slow cooker, almost. There's a little twist to it, which is solely for an instant pot, but we'll get to that. The following ingredients you're going to need for this delicious dish are, well, your beef. And this is about a two and a half pound chuck roast. And you see here, it's well marbled. You got a lot of fat, but not a lot of fat. You know, it's just marbled fat within there. There were some other um, roasts that we found in the store and they had like huge chunks of fat. Uh, I'm more of a beef kind of guy, but there's enough fat in there that's gonna give it flavor, which is perfect. My wife picked out that roast and she did a good job. You also want a packet of ranch dressing and a packet of au jus gravy mix. And, or brown gravy Or mix. brown gravy, either way. And a half a stick of butter. We're using a olive oil and sea salt butter. Any half a stick of butter will do. That's the same recipe that you'll find on Recipes of the Crock for the uh, slow cooker version of this recipe. Yeah. So if you don't have an Instant Pot, mm -hmm. we still are linking down below. So you guys Yeah, we're still going to link it down below to where you can have the original recipe. But a lot of y'all have been asking for Instant Pot recipes, and this is the one for you. Trust me. But this is where it varies just a little bit. One of the last things you need in this recipe are the six pepperoncinis that I almost forgot to tell them about. <laughs> but you also need liquid because in an Instant Pot, it's going to cook under high heat, under immense pressure. Well, you don't want this stuff to dry out. You want it to stay moist, and you want that moisture, that liquid, to push into your meat. It makes it all juicy, breaks it all down, you know? So you've got that really tender piece of meat. Well, the only way you're going to do that is with liquid, and there's not enough liquid within that beef and melted butter to do what it's got to do. So we're also going to add a half a cup of beef broth as well as a half a cup of the juice from the pepperoncinis. And if y'all have not tried this recipe, you're going, well, those are peppers. Those are going to be hot. It's going to be really spicy. No, it's not. You know how I know this? My daughter does not like spicy foods. I've started to get her a little bit hooked on Slap Your Mama spice, spicy seasoning. <laughs> she loves the taste of the pepperoncinis in here. It gives it more of a sour flavor than a spicy flavor. Does that make sense? And if you don't like, if you don't want to do that, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just put a cup of beef yeah, broth. Yeah, just use a cup of beef of broth. If, you, if you're still scared it's going to be too spicy, yeah, back off of the pepperoncini stuff. Uh, the juices of that and do a cup of this. But I tell you, you're going to add a lot more flavor if you go with the pepperoncini juice. So and we like using all everything instead of throwing away the juice at the end. We've yeah. used everything in the jar. Exactly. So We're saving. Yes. Conserving. Conserving. That's the word. Yes. <laughs> My wife has a bigger thesaurus than I do. <laughs> First thing you want to do is put your beef roast in the pot. Just like that. Yep. Maybe not sideways. Let's put him down below like this. <laughs> Oh, that was a stand-up cut of beef, I'll tell you. Let me wash my hands real quick. And once you got your beef roast laying down in the bottom of the pot, you take your ranch gravy, or your ranch salad dressing packet, and you put it right over the top of your piece of meat. And then you take... <laughs> And all over your counter. <laughs> Forgot to put on my apron. <laughs> Might have been a good idea to put it on. Too late now. Take your gravy and make sure it all goes in the pot. <laughs> and not all over your counter. Just over the top like that. And then, a half a stick of butter. It's a little softened where it was sitting on the counter. Butter. Butter fingers. Wash my hands again so that nothing else slips and slides out of it. Are you hiding that you're using paper towels? 
<laughs> no. Kim, don't see, don't watch. Kim, don't look. <laughs> she knows who we're talking about, and we absolutely love that lady. She's been a big member of our crock posse for a long time. Six, pepperoncinis. This is where you get to go fishing for pepperoncinis. And a one. And a two. And a three. And if it goes on top of your roast instead of beside your roast, it's not going to matter. What we got in there right now? Three, four, five, and we'll do one more. Six. Just about perfect, just like that. Now, I'm going to take my half a cup and I'm going to put it in the bottom. Notice I'm not pouring on top of my gravy and ranch. I want to keep that on top, so just go to the side of your beef. This is going to go down underneath the meat. And that's the other thing. That much heat, you put meat directly on the bottom of that metal pan and you don't have any liquid, it's going to stick to the bottom of that pan. And this is where we have a little finesse. So finesse for me means do it over the top of the pot so I don't spill any or dump any more pepperoncinis. Half a cup of pepperoncini juice. That smells so good. Right in there. Now it looks like that meat's already on the bottom of the slow cooker so I so that I don't mess this up. You mean instant bring that. Pot. My instant pot, yeah. Did I say slow cooker? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I never do those kind of recipes. <laughs> I want to make sure that that liquid. Well, this is another reason why we're going to turn when we get to the programming feature. We're going to turn the warming feature off. There we go. Because we don't want it to continue to cook on the bottom and scorch the bottom. Yeah. Did you see what all did, what I did there, y'all? What I did was I moved that meat around so that the liquid gets all the way around it. That way we're not stuck with a piece of dried charcoal at the bottom of our instant pot. And now. That's it. All you gotta do is put a lid on it. In a minute. I was gonna say, all you gotta do? <laughs> um, honey, no. The, it, oh, the arrows are going front. You see, you can line it up. Oh. Oh. When you hear that sound, you know it's on. Okay. Correctly. So. <laughs> and then. So we're gonna go on manual and we're gonna hit the manual button twice. Manual button twice. So that turns the warming feature off. Yes. Then we're going to turn up, uh, turn up our time to 60 minutes. Um, the original recipe calls for 90 minutes because it's a five to six pound roast and our roast was only two and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And two and a half pounds will feed a lot of people. Yeah, so we... 60. We're going to do it at, for 60. Make sure that your seal is closed on top. Is it to seal? It is sealing. Okay, there you go. And so we're going to let it go, and we're going to come back to y'all. Roger. Roger. <laughs> Roger that, Ghost Rider. I don't know where that came from. So now it's been 60 minutes since we put our Mississippi beef roast in our Instant Pot. And we let it naturally release for about 15, 20 minutes to see, to just let it sit. And so in order to come in and check it, we're gonna quick. We quick released it right before we turned on the cameras to let the rest of the pressure out. That way, the steam wouldn't shoot up and yeah, mess and up so, an expensive camera. Yeah, it. So you can let it natural release all the rest of the way if you want. Um, we quick released and it tastes just fine to us. So. And don't force it open because no, that's a lot have, of pressure. Yeah, never have, ever force. No, you a, want all the pressure released yeah. before you do that. So open it up. Never force a pressure cooker open, whether it's an instant pot or off the stove. Yeah. So let's see if we're tender. We think we should be because it. Oh, <laughs> because Take the fork test first. Is it tender? That side's very tender. That side's a little. No. There's just, there was just like one piece right there that was kind of tough. But. Really? No, look at that. Do you see that? Look how easy that's coming. In fact, that's coming off easier than I want it to for now for illustration purposes. But look at there. Look how easy yeah. that meat is falling apart. That's an hour. Yeah. What you would slow cook over eight hours in one hour, 
is that tender. Look, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. Perfect. Now, it takes about 10, 15 minutes for it to reach full pressure. Actually, it reached full pressure pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and then it's an hour. The clock starts. But now let's do a test. Okay. Because the slow cook test versus the instant pot test as far as flavor goes. He just wanted to eat it. Mm. <laughs> now, I can taste a difference. You can. Mm -hmm. How's that? What's the difference? Hang on. <laughs> I'm still tasting. It falls apart as far as that connective tissue that holds the meat together, you know. It falls apart that way. Mm -hmm. But when you bite into it, the actual muscle fibers of the meat are still a little, a little tougher. I think maybe if we'd have let that go for another 20 to 30 minutes. Well, the original recipe calls for 90. But then also flavor-wise, whenever you cook low and slow, it kind of caramelizes the, those flavors, those packets mix in with everything and it gets, it's a little bit darker of a flavor in your slow cooker than what it does well, in the Instant you're Pot. Well, you're diluting it with your juices too, but I... Yeah, but you're also adding the, um, the broth. Right. And I can taste that sour from that pepperoncini. And chewing this up, it's not spicy at all. Okay, but without comparing it to the slow cooker mm -hmm. recipe, it's how do you good. think it ranks as an Instant Pot recipe? I, it's my favorite Instant Pot recipe. <laughs> mm. You're, it's going to be hard to ever beat a Mississippi beef roast just because of the flavors themselves. Mm -hmm. mm. Hang on, I'm cleaning my plate. Oh my goodness. But, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. But if you invite somebody over and say, hey, we're going to have a Mississippi beef roast. Didn't tell them how you got it done. And you fed them that. They're going to be happy. It's so good. It is still so, so good. It's that mixture of flavors. You put that mixture of flavors over anything. Maybe not ice cream or pie. <laughs> but you put those flavors over a beef, a pig, a chicken, a fish. I'd like to try it with a fish. Oh, it wouldn't bother goodness. me a bit. Yes. It's still going to taste amazing every time. Hey, you guys like my handy plate? <laughs> mm. But we want to thank you all for watching another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes. Give us a subscribe down below if you have not become a member of the Crock Posse. Also, give us a like down below. Give us a comment down below. What would you like to try in an Instant Pot? Have you ever done a Mississippi beef in an Instant Pot? What's your horror stories in the kitchen? We want to know it all. Let us know down below. <laughs> And also keep checking on the channel for more videos. We'll keep popping them up and we're going to have a whole lot of fun together. Y'all keep watching. We'll keep cooking and all will be well. Now leave me alone. I'm going to get me some more of my beef. We're going to be cooking up our ever popular Mississippi Beast, beast Roast. <laughs> our Mississippi Beast Roast. Go get yourself a beast and put it in a pot. <laughs>